Hi everyone. Uh, so, welcome to remote learning. Uh, hopefully, you saw my pupil path email that I sent to you, or you were just smart enough to check Replit, and you're here. Uh, you'll have seen the link in the pupil path email or in the Replit instructions, and uh, you know we're we're gonna try uh, remote learning since we don't really have another choice. All right, so uh, let's just hop into that. All right, so you should see this assignment. Uh, obviously, mine uh, is incomplete because I'm shooting this video right now, but it should look pretty much like this. You have your HTML. There's no JavaScript right now, and you'll see I actually gave you a little bit of CSS just to make your life easier. Um, but uh, this is essentially how it's going to work while we're doing remote learning. I'll give you an assignment, I'll give you an accompanying video, or I'll be live. And uh, we'll go through this together, and you guys can complete these at your own pace. Uh, but, you know, try to get them done at, w within the day that it is uh, assigned. Uh, and I'll, I'll try not to go crazy with you guys. These should all be uh, pretty easy to accomplish. All right. So... A uh, couple of things I do want to note. Uh, in this instruction section, uh, the link to the YouTube video will always be uh, the first link that you see here. Uh, I also want to note that you will always, always, always see this link in every one of your assignments. Please make sure that you fill this uh, Google form out every single school day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, between the hours of 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. so that I can mark you present for my class. All right, I, there, the school itself is still working on how to record attendance, but attendance must be recorded, and this is the way I am doing so. So make sure that you do this. That Google form should look something like this. All right, you can put in your email address, personal or John Dewey, I don't care. Uh, first and last name must be written clearly and spelled correctly. Hopefully you can do that with your own name, though pff, some people, I don't know. Uh, your OSIS number, and then just put your period number, whichever one it is, and you've got to do that every single day. To confirm that you've done that, I highly recommend that you check that off so that you get a copy of the response that you made, and if by some happenstance you mess up, just resubmit the form so that I can mark you present. Okay, so let's actually get into what we're going to do today. Today we are learning Canvas. Uh, I know we've been doing a lot of event listeners lately, and we're actually going to uh, introduce that in a little bit in the Canvas, but for right now, uh, we're just going to do some very basic Canvas. And well, I keep on saying Canvas, Canvas, Canvas. What is that? Canvas is the HTML and JavaScript drawing tool that you can use to draw images on your page. But let's stop telling and start showing. All right. In the body section of your index.html uh, file, let's create a Canvas element. And we're going to give this the class attribute and the ID attribute for now. Uh, now, if an element is not supported in uh, in a browser. What HTML is very kind to do is whatever the element is when it's not read by the browser, instead of displaying what it should display, it'll display what is in the body of that element instead. So you'll see, uh, I'm using Google Chrome and Google Chrome does support Canvas. So when I run this, you will not see on my website browser does not support Canvas because a Canvas element is there. Now you might be saying, well, Mr. Sands, I don't see anything on your rendering of the page. Well, that's because a Canvas is a translucent element until you draw on it. And just to sort of see that this Canvas element is in fact on my screen, let's use some of these CSS classes that I have given to you already. You'll see I've given you in the index.css file a bordered class, a centered class, and a square class that we can apply to this canvas element. So let's try that out. In the class attribute, I'm going to give this the bordered class. And if I run it again, you should see, oh, 
I have an element on my canvas. Sorry, on my uh, website. This is your canvas element. It starts off in this, I forget the exact dimensions. I think it might be like 300 by 400 or 400 by 200, numbers that I'm not thinking about right now. Uh, but yeah, so we bordered it. If you want to have it in the center of your screen, you don't have to. But if you want, I do. You can give it the centered class that I've already defined for you. And if you'd like it to have square dimensions, again, not necessary, but it's what I would like. For me, I'm going to give it the square class. All right, so now I have this canvas element that I can draw on at some point. Now, let's give it an ID so that we can access it in JavaScript. And now let's go to JavaScript. Ta-da! All right, so now in the index.js file, what you're going to want to do, as we've been doing, you know, this past week, uh, well, not this past week, but the one before when we were still meeting, uh, we want to get our HTML element in our JavaScript. And the easiest way to do that with this uh, element is just, just to use get element by ID. Remember, lower camel case. So I'm going to create a variable. I'm just going to call it C1. Why not? And I'm going to set it equal to document dot get element by ID and then put that C1 as the argument. All right, because that's the ID of that element that we have down here. Then what we're going to do just to draw on this is I'm going to create a function. Uh, very simple. I'm going to call it function draw. I'm going to say, all right, uh, let's create uh, this new variable called ctx uh, context. And I'm going to set it equal to c1.get context 2d. All right, so what did I just do? Uh, you might be like, whoa, 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 what's happening? Uh, the context for a canvas element is essentially the drawing tool. It's what you use to uh, draw lines, circles, squares, add colors, etc. to your canvas. All right, and there could be a two-dimensional context, a three-dimensional context. We're only going to be talking about two-dimensional context. Uh, and uh, this is just what you need in order to uh, actually draw on your canvas. All right, and we're just going to do very simple things today, but, you know, that's that's the long and short of it. All right, so now let's let's talk about a few things that we can do with the context. Firstly, context.fill style. All right, this is how you can determine the color that fills in a shape in your canvas. If you uh, don't set this to anything, the default fill style is black. But for now, I'm going to set it to red. You'll see how this comes into play later on. I'll also have ctx.stroke style. And like fill style, this is how you can set the color for a canvas. But now this will change the color of lines and outlines. So I'm going to set this one to green, which again will come into play in a moment. And now we're just going to do two basic things since we've already done a lot of talking and I'm sure this video is already uh, decently long. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do that I'm going to show you is called ctx.fillrect. All right. And fillrect and I'll just put this here. Philrect takes four arguments. All right. X, Y, W, and H. And if you've been in my class and been paying attention so far, or if you've been in any math class, you could probably guess what these are. X and Y are a coordinate pair that tell you where to put your rectangle. And W and H are the width and height of that rectangle. Now, how is this going to work? All right, well, x and y, or the coordinate pair x, y, is the position of the top left 
corner, man, I can't type, of your rectangle. All right. And W and H is obviously the width and the height, as I just met, uh, mentioned. So I'll just say W and H are the width and height. Uh, I'm putting these comments here. I highly recommend you put the comments in your assignment for yourself, but you don't need to. I'm not. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking that you have the actual content that we are writing here. All right. So now we have this fill rect. Let's put something in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in 0, 0, uh, let's put 100, 100. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do right now for the JavaScript portion. And what, uh, oh, you know, one last thing. Uh, what I'm going to do now that I've finished my function is I'm simply going to call the function. All right, let's zoom out just a little bit so that's easier to see. So this is all that we did in the JavaScript. I said, get my C1, write this function called draw, and then I'm just going to call that function down here. And now if I run my page, you should see I have this rectangle. Hmm. Okay, so Mr. Sand is noticing his mistake. He's looking at this and he's like, well, this doesn't look like a 100 by 100 rectangle. And reason being is he changed the uh, CSS. He changed the uh, the dimensions of the canvas using CSS instead of using uh, the direct width and height property of this uh, canvas. So here's what we're going to do to fix that. Firstly, we're going to get rid of this square uh, class. You'll see that now it looks like a 100 by 100 rectangle, but our canvas is no longer that square we wanted it to be. Easy. What we're going to do in the HTML window is just set this width to 400 px, this height to 400 px, and now it's exactly the dimensions we wanted it to be without the weird stretching. All right. So now that that weird issues aside, let's talk about what exactly this fill rect did. We're going to put a couple more notes and then we'll call it here. All right. So we do see a rectangle that is 100 by 100. If we said that this canvas is 400 pixels by 400 pixels, which it is, you could see that this is about one fourth of the width of our, our square and also one fourth of the height of our square. So that 100, 100 probably makes sense as the dimensions. But Mr. Sands, you've said the coordinate pair x, y, and we gave it 0, 0, represents the position of the top left corner of your rectangle. Well, my rectangle is all the way in the top left corner of my canvas. What gives? I've done grid systems before, Mr. Sands. I know that 0, 0 is the center of a grid, not in canvas. All right, so let's put another couple of notes in here. In Canvas, the x position 0 is the far left of the grid, and the y position is the, or rather, the y position zero is the top most of the grid. As x increases, the position moves more, I can't type, more to the right as y increases the position moves more down. All right, so, um, probably not the best English. Mr. Sand struggles to speak and think. <laughs> but uh, let's, let's see exactly what this is. So I'm saying that zero as an exhibition is the farthest left that you can go. So let's try increasing this. Let's increase this to 
Uh, let's let's make it 200. And now if I run this again, you'll see my square has moved to the right. Well, it's actually moved to the right 200 units. Because as you increase your x, you move more right. Pretty simple. You've done this in coordinate geometry. All right. Let's increase this value. I'm going to increase it to 50. And you'll see now it's moved down. In fact, it's moved down 50 units. And again, that's because as your y increases, you, the, uh, the position goes down. All right. And so this top left corner of our filled rectangle is at 250. And it makes a 100 by 100 shape. Hopefully, Mr. Sands can edit this video so that it is less confusing or, you know, not too terrible and so that it doesn't have to reshoot it for you guys. But there you go. Now, uh, one last thing that I do want to mention. You'll see this rectangle is red. Well, that's because we used fill rect. And you'll see that our fill style is red. And in fact, if you wanted to, and you wanted to have an empty uh, rectangle, you could have said stroke rect instead. And if you do, you'll see that it instead gives you a line drawing of a square in the exact same position and dimensions, but now it's green. And that's because our stroke style is green. All right, well, I hope this was informative. I hope this doesn't take up too much of your day. Uh, and then I hope you can get this done and submitted for me today. I'm looking forward to those submissions. Please hit that submit button right up there. Please, 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 please hit that. Uh, also, please do not forget to do this Google form. It is critically important that you do that. Otherwise, I can't mark you present and you want to be present. So, uh, yeah, we're going to continue this on Tuesday and Wednesday and add a bunch of new stuff. But... This is a good primer. Let's just let's just leave it here. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, and oh, oh, you'll see in the comment section down below, not the comment section, in the information section down below that we have a Discord channel. I'll also put it at the end of the video. Please join the Discord. If you don't have Discord as an app already, you should. What are you doing? You're, you know, a modern generation child. You should have Discord. Come on. Uh, and then, you know, we can use that for posting questions and having like great dis discussions about code and everything. So join the Discord. All right. Goodbye for real this time. See ya.